Hey guys, just getting set up. How's everybody doing today? Crappy day for trading futures today, guys. No trend. Really tough. Really tough. If it ain't trending, don't trade it. I'm stuck in an M2K trade in the moment. <laughs> We'll go through that in a minute. Let's wait for a few more people to uh, log in and we'll get going. Just going to go through this RTY trade today, which is coming down again now because I am short. <clears throat> Not too bad, Trevor. Not too bad. Weekends on at Nera's. Great trading day yesterday. Today has just not worked out. <clears throat> There's not been a great deal of trades. So with uh, RTY, we had this triple bottom formed overnight, well, quadruple bottom. So I actually went for a short below. Okay, now it got in, it pulled back up, didn't take my stop out because I had it up above here. Now it's coming back down again. What I wanted to show you was, I, when you get in such a low entry, and you're going short. If you get another signal, you can use one of the other indicators to actually get you in to dilute that holding position, if you like, so you can get to break even a lot quicker. And that's what I did here on, um, on RTY. So this uh, roller coaster short here at 14.35 actually then increased the, the holding position was changed because I was already two contracts short uh, on that, but it pulled back against me. Didn't take my stop out, but coming back down, I used the roller coaster in this case to give me another position to reduce my average holding cost, if you like. So now when you look at this, I'm almost at break even because my original entry was all the way down here. But because I got a higher entry, it averaged out. And now I'm almost at break even. And sometimes, guys, you want, when you're on playing defense, this is what you're after. You're after looking at different, of, you know, more of the uh, time frames, uh, the, the indicator suites, to actually give you that opportunity to get risk free and get out. Okay. So right now, I've been holding on to this frigging trade right from just after the open. So this was the uh, opening candle here. Rejected, came down, rejected again, but then I went down below here. And then obviously, it's pulled back. It gave a decent profit here, pulled back, didn't take my stop out. My stop was just up here somewhere, uh, 45, 10 or something. Then it's come back down, and on the way back down, I got another position using a different time frame and a different strategy, a different indicator suite. So this is, again, it's tied into what we're doing today is the trilogy. It's trying to use them together. Sometimes it's using them together to actually, uh, you know, uh, get a really good looking trade. In this case, I've used them to actually get me out of a hole, if you like. Right now, I can actually go risk-free with these three contracts, and I'm looking good. So it's, it's been a patient day, and I know Gary, is Gary in yet? No. Uh, you know, in the circle, 
you know, we've not done a lot of trading today because the markets just haven't been there for us. But using these different indicator suites in a different way this time, I'm actually making a little bit of money, not a lot. Uh, but the main thing for me is I've gone from minus 150. Now, by using that, getting in higher on a short, using um, the roller coaster in this case, uh, so I've used bits and roller coaster. Um, I'm actually in a position now where I can close the trade out. This is RTY. Uh, I can close the trade out and a little bit of profit because I've used the defensive. I've used the two indicator suites together to actually, as a defensive play, to get me to, to risk free a lot quicker. So, you know, the, those, those are the options there to help you. Uh, sometimes when you've got a, when, you, when there's a, not a great trading day, you can actually be in a hole like I was with this, with this trade. And the idea was to get a higher entry on this short, a short entry, uh, using my indicator suite, looking at that momentum going down so I can actually get to risk free. And Gary, uh, you know, is, is in my inner circle. Um, you know, we'd finished, we're still in this trade and I just put in the chat, look guys, gonna use this, get an extra contract uh, so we can get to break even a lot quicker, okay? So it's not always about getting those winning trades. Sometimes it's actually using the indicator suites together uh, to actually get yourself out of a hole, get defensive. Does that make sense? Because you've got NQ pushing one way, RTY pushing another way. There's not a lot going off here that's that's any good to anybody, uh, you know, trading on a, on a slow day that's not got a great deal of momentum in either direction is very, very tough. Okay. So usually I like to show you examples of winning trades that I've traded the day, but right now that's the, you know, that was a defensive play today, purely because we're not trending. And, you know, that was the opportunity to actually get to risk free. And that sometimes that feels like a win. So what we're going to have to do is go back to yesterday, I think, uh, because yesterday was a great trading day. And uh, we'll look at some of those, uh, those trades and how they progress and, and, and everything like that using a different, um, you know, more than one of the indicator suites. So HG yesterday was a pretty big day for me. So let's, um, let's go back on the five minutes. So that's that one. Let's go back on the three minutes. I just got to get these teed up, guys. Sorry. Crappy day today everywhere. Let me go big on the roller coaster. <laughs> Uh, sorry, the bits. Sometimes you feel very tired when you've had a day where you've not got a lot of trades in. Okay. Okay, so that was the bits. Right, so we're good. 
Right. So yesterday, tell you the story. Trading HG a lot just lately and getting some good winners. Okay. Some really, really good winners. Uh, I've been waiting for that gold to push down. Is it going to do it right now? Okay. So three minutes yesterday. Yesterday morning, so this 9 a.m. is the European Open here, okay? 8 a.m. is the pre-market, if you like, uh, for that European Open. So we come down, we have this double top. We get this, um, this roller coaster signal here right just before the Open, okay? I've got to go for it. I'm looking at the dollar. I'm looking at the DAX. Everything's looking good. Take the roller coaster, takes me out, but look how close that was to continue up. So I'm feeling good about HG yesterday. The next trade, and I did this with the inner circle, was the short on the bits. So I know this is responding well. I, you know, we've gone up and then we're coming down again and we're testing these. Uh, we're going from support resistance zone to support resistance zone. Uh, I, we pull down, we find some good support here, and then we get a bit signal here. Didn't trigger, took out the stop. So what do you do? You cancel the order, okay? Then we get another one. We get a bit signal, 2388, and this is the one we took, and the 2392 stop. 2392, when we're looking at bits, remember, where our stop is, and when we look left, it's above these two pivots. This is a really good stop. So regardless of the entry, my stop position is good. My entry is pretty good here as well. It goes and it goes hell for leather all the way down. I actually took profit down here. If you remember Matt and um, Gary, I don't know who else is in here. Then it pulled back and I know Dave stayed in and he went all the way down to, to there. Um, but this, this, you know, this is how it, uh, how it goes. So if we look at this now, I and mean, then we look at this pullback, that's probably a way for here. And then we can get in there again. But that was my trade. Two trades yesterday. Let me go back to here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so this was this little move here. You see, th this was... An amazing, amazing move yesterday. Uh, I used the roller coaster going up. I used the bits going down. You know, it was a great looking trade. Now, what you've got to consider is today. Okay, look at ES today. Very poor trading conditions. So they weren't used at the same time because there wasn't any opportunities. What I'm trying to do, if I try and find your examples today, really, really tough because we have been really, really bad on trading conditions. But ES for me now looks pretty good, purely because we've got some overnight highs we're trying to push through here. So remember, it's all about framing your trade. Got these overnight highs here, whoops. Okay, put these in. Now we've broken those. We've broken out of a range. Look at this bit signal recently here. The signal was out above that range. That was a good 3055 was the good trade today. Um, we are, you know, it's on the bits. We've had no real other opportunities because. I'm not going to go long or short in this range. Really difficult to predict, to read. Okay. Really difficult. Okay. I can't say it enough. Uh, once we break out of that range though, that was the first signal we had on the bits to break out. It was above the high overnight highs. And this is pretty good. That's gone nearly five points now. That's not a bad looking trade. If we didn't get in it, we have to let this run. Does it pull back and test this particular support and resistance zone? Can we go again? Okay. 
So they're the questions you should be asking yourself now. We've had a nice breakout. If you got that, well done. Um, it's, you know, you should be risk-free now, especially on how the day is going. Um, but, you know, that's a, that's a good looking trade. There's no way to look at a trilogy today. It's been very, very difficult. One thing, one thing I will look at though, is 6B, because there has been opportunities there. Uh, and, I've, um, and I have traded that. Marty, HG is going again, it's going up again, but it's nearly estimated move high, just to let you know. So, what I want to do now is I want to show you the trade but it was using both um, the bits and the Elliott wave. Okay, let me bring the news on three minutes. Okay. Right, so on this three minute chart here, We've pulled back, we've come back above the point of control, and then I got a signal, 23285, okay? That was how long it took, just recently. Now, what backs that up is the two minute chart that I have to my left. Look at that pullback on the two minute chart. It was a wave four, okay? It hit the red zone. 535, good. Stochastic was good. It was a little deep, so I needed a bit signal, okay, on a different time frame. Something that would help me feel secure and confident that this long was going to be good. Because we've got this recent high, we've had a wave for pullback, it's met the rules, okay. Now, I get a signal on the three minute for a bit's long. I also get a signal for a bit's long on the two minute as well. That's a little higher, gives me a little bit more of a fuzzy feeling, if you like, that this is good. So now I go to go in the long and I just move it up. You know, how, how, do I, how do I manage this trade is very difficult because I like to use the roller coaster trading stops for that. But when you're trading bits and you go long, you can use the lagging point of control for your trailing stop or the main point of control, the pink dots. In my case, I use the pink dots taken out, okay? Now, remember, we were looking at the two minute time frame on the Elliott wave. We were measuring this, when I see a pullback during the day, I wanna measure it, I wanna see, is it a nice wave for, does it meet the rules on, on a time frame around this, okay? So I'm looking at two, three, five, and one minute. And yes, on the two minute, it's a nice wave four pullback. Find support in the red zone, okay? Find support in the red zone. 535 oscillators between 90 and 140. Sarcastics pulled back and crossed over in the oversold zone. As far as that two minute wave four pullback, that's behaved very, very well. Very tough to get an entry. But look how this has worked out now. I took a more conservative entry using three minute bits. So I'm combining two of those. And then I used the trading stop as these pink dots. Okay, got taken out. But now look, on this 6B on the two minute, it's hit the fifth wave target zone, guys. Fifth, it's, you know, really, really simple. So I had to have a really tough day. Uh, they were there. Okay, so the false breakout is denotes a strong bullish trend on the stochastic Trevor. So remember, if I get that, I know it's a strong bullish trend because the stochastic is crossing over backwards and forwards in that overbought zone. So it's a really strong bullish trend. So when I get that, 
as well. So if I just go back to the three minute. So my thought process is we've been, we've been had the false breakout here. We've pulled back, crossed over in the oversold zone. Is there a good way for somewhere? Yes. Okay. And then we go back to this false breakout scenario, if you like, where I got this strong bullish trend. Remember, stochastics like an elastic band. When you get these false breakouts, when it goes back and crosses over down here, it wants to come back. It wants to come back. But I need some security. This is a tough trading day. Where is my security? Look on that uh, two minute Elliott wave pullback meets all the rules. Okay, looks fantastic. Yeah, I need a better entry though. I don't want to be too aggressive with the entry because it's a really tough trading day. So what do I do? I look in the three minute, I look for a bit. So I look, remember bits gives me momentum. It gives me um, volume to the upside. When that happens and I get a signal, I'm confident that momentum is returning to that main bullish trend of the day. So you get in, you go long. How you manage that? There's lots of different ways to do that. But in reality, uh, you know, you can use these dots or the yellow line for your trailing stop on that particular type of trade. That makes sense, Trevor? Looking at HG again a second. That bloody NASDAQ is still going, isn't it? So we went out of tech this week and into banks uh, and things like that. But uh, everything's gone out of banks today and gone back into tech. That's why we've got a crazy, crazy day. Yes, I would. It just gives you more confidence. The whole point today, Trevor, is to actually combine the indicator suites to give you more confidence that the direction of the trade that you want to trade is good. Okay, so not just our, you just get a bit signal, but you've got that you've got that uh, stochastic with those false breakouts at the top, denoting that strong bullish trend. You've got the the wave four pullback on that two minute. And it looks pretty bloody good. So it's actually combining them to give you that uh, confidence that it's a good looking trade. Okay. And this is why, in reality, I developed this strategy, these three strategies, because you need, you need, you need things that complement sometimes, especially in tough trading conditions. You need that extra comfort blanket that you you're making the right decision and those can help. Now, again, if you're getting conflicting stories, okay, um, that makes you want to sort of step back and, and, you know, take, take notes and say, hmm, no, this doesn't look quite right. Okay. Because remember your job as a trader is to find reasons not to get in a trade. If you can't find those reasons, then, you know, you've got to go. Um, so for me, that's what, what you're looking at right now. And, you know, you, you, you're, 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 you see a, a, you know, a pullback. What does that pullback look like on those other time frames? Is it a wave for stochastic good yet? Bits, have we got a, have we got a roller coaster signal? Okay. Um, does it look good? You know, I mean, right now, you know, look at, look at HG. Okay. On the one minute roller coaster. Yeah. Holy moly moly. Okay. Really, really good. But was there a signal on a different time frame on a different, you know, HG has been tough today. HG has been tough. We're almost near the estimated move high. So there could be, um, 
you know, a lot at risk here if you were to go in that trade right now. Um, you know, especially this bit signal here. We're good on the roller coaster. We know we're good on the roller coaster. Uh, so when I look at this bit signal on here, Okay, I know we've had a big move up today already. I'm going to look at I'm going to look at my one minute on my uh, two four one three seven. Okay, so you know this has respected very very well for quite some time. It's not doing too bad. My stop for this is this signal is two four one zero seven five. One zero seven five is all the way down here. I could be a little tighter with this one if I wanted to. Um, but for me right now, I've got to think, you know, on a, on a, on a Elliott wave standpoint, we're on a wave three. Okay. That could pull back on a wave four any minute. Am I going to go long right now? Okay. Yes. There's quite a lot of fresh air up above that on the far on the uh, five minute because that's the next support and resistance zone so that's pretty you know it doesn't look too bad and a wave three can keep going but we didn't get in early enough on this impulse move that's the problem we don't want to get in too late we've had we're a nice move it's moved up we you know we're pulling back a little bit right now maybe okay you don't know where the wave three is going to end that one minute signal was the one to take earlier. We didn't get it, okay? Um, so we have to wait now, we have to monitor. Does this wave four pull back? Does it find support? Is there another opportunity to go long on HG right now, okay? Bear with me a second. Okay, so they, those are the things. We're combining this. We're saying HG's had a good move. Where's that move come from? Where was the trade? The trade was on this, okay? This is quite extended now. If we're sensible traders, which I, hopefully most of you are, okay, we would let this wave three continue. Let it pull back on a wave four and then trade, okay? We don't want it to be getting in just as that wave three turns. So again, I'm looking at different time frames. I'm looking at different strategies, but I'm, it's giving me a picture of how this particular instrument is actually behaving right now. If I didn't get in early enough, it's too late. Okay, it is too late. I've just got to wait to see if that pullback. I don't want to take these bit signals when I'm overextended on this wave three because, you know, look at this five minute now. Remember your chart patterns. That's an indecision doji. If this next candle now comes down and engulfs that, the potential is this is the start of that wave four pullback. We don't want to get involved in that. It's all a little bit too messy. So remember that RTY, still in it because <laughs> I've been talking. I didn't take it out when I could have done the whole strategy with you with using the different uh, uh, time frames and different uh, indicator suites was to get it to break even. And it was green, but I was talking with you guys and uh, it came down here and it's come back up again and that's come back down again. Uh, so I've just got to be a, a little bit more conscious on that. Uh, to see where it goes because the thing is NQ is really strong right now there's a lot of tech sector that's doing very very well um, so despite that RTY still looks pretty weak overall support and resistance zone seems to be holding a little bit but I missed the opportunity 
to finish off that strategy of um, getting it to risk free sooner using those different combining those different strategies that we have. So just got to be a little bit more patient. Doesn't look like it wants to go up, but that's famous last words of a losing trader. Okay. What else? Um, what were those ding dings? Six S long. Mm, yeah, dollars overextended today. We'll have a look. So I've got a 6S signal come through on a three minute bit. So we're going to do some work on this and um, go through the process, if you like, to see whether it looks good. Okay, so bear with me. So straight away, I can see there's a roller coaster short on the one minute for this. <laughs> okay. I see the dollar is overextended to the downside, which has made this move up today. We've gone through that fifth wave target zone there. So we've moved a long way. Europe's closed. So again, I've got conflicting stories here. Uh, as Europe's closed, the volume's gone down a little bit on this, so we need to just, so in reality now on the one minute, I've got a roller coaster short, okay? The bias is still bullish, okay, from the bits, which is good, but now on the three minute, I've got a bits signal long. Now the bit signal long on the three minute only gives me to the, to the first target zone to the high of the day. So the risk to reward there isn't fantastic. Okay. It's not great. I have got a bit signal above the high of the day. Have I got anything else to back me up on another time frame? Okay. So I've got a bit signal on the 15 minute at 103.87 which is pretty good. Got a bit signal here on the five minute, which is above the high of the day, but I've still got that conflicting roller coaster on the one minute and the dollar's found amazing support right now. Okay. So the dollar needs to go down for this to go up, but the dollar has found massive support. So I've always got that dollar chart open on a different computer to my right, but I'll show you the dollar right now. This is the dollar right now, that support. We need to, to break that support to be comfortable with a long on, on 6S because 6S, the Swiss franc goes the opposite way to the US dollar. So right now we need to keep an eye on that. If that does break down below this low, there's a good opportunity on that long. But before then, I will not be setting it up. I've got conflicting messages on two different strategies. Sometimes that happens, but then I've got that dollar at support, which is not trying to push down actually. Okay. Remember, if this long goes in, it breaks the stop for that um, one minute. For that one minute uh, roller coaster. God, I missed it again. It went back to break even. I missed it again. You guys, the dollar's just made a new low. Okay. So this could be an opportunity here. Um, to, to go long because dollars working my way. The dollar should go down a little further here. Now look at this conflict on the one minute. We've got a short and we've got a long forming on the roller coaster. Woo!
Who'd take this trade? Who'd take this trade long? 12 bucks, 50 per tick. If you wanted to take it, you'd be in by now. <clears throat> now look, the roller coaster along on the one minute it's been taken in, that conflict there. We've got the dollar pushing new lows. It's taken us in on the five minute bits as well. So, you know, we're looking at that all the time. That's really, really good looking um, start. So Trevor, you want me to look at some stocks? Okay, let's do that. Let's look at JP Morgan. That's probably having a bad day if that's the finance sector is. Uh, not been a bad day, really. So we, we should already be long on the roller coaster. Is there any bit signals on smaller time frames? So it's, it's also, as always, you've got to look on the multiple time frames to see uh, what's going off. Is there, are there any signals that are going to help me? Where's the finance, even the ETFs red today? It's slightly red. It's, it's an ugly looking trade, to be honest. You can see I've been doing some work on it. It gets quite rangy here. Uh, so to get back in that range, it's got to go back above 105.61. But then you could find big resistance 11707. So yeah, you you are you got you you're you're heading up onto resistance right now. Um, that's you know that if it can push through there, fantastic. If not, it could come back down and test these lows again. And you've got earnings coming up. Um, not for a while yet, but in July. Finance did quite well this week because people were selling tech to go into finance, but today it's just shed a lot of that. Okay, and that's, you know, that's one of the things you've got to keep an eye on as well. And the other one was MRK. But, uh, yes, yeah, keeps keeps grinding. It was a good trade at three oh five five. It made a high of three oh six two, so seven points. Not a bad trade. Um, doesn't set the world on fire, but to be honest, on a day like today, it's a pretty good trade. Okay, was the other one. Mm. Hit a range right now. Uh, you need your stop at 75.24 below this pivot if it breaks down there. I mean, for me, the roller coaster short looks great here. If it comes back down below there, I'd be going short at short Merck. Uh, there's a great deal of distance down to $65. So I'd be very, very careful. Um, your, your stop needs to be just below this pivot here at 75.32.
No, even that didn't move today. Six S is still just above that entry look, but dollar still wants to push down here. The problem is with these uh, currencies now, guys, you've got to be in these currencies earlier on in the day. Once European markets close, the volume is crap. How do I, I mean, look at the one minute here. Look, boom, 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 okay? That is, ex look at these here, really, really low volume. There's no updates on the indicators, Trevor. We're in lockdown. We're surviving. We're not developing. <laughs> Got great win rates on these um, on the roller coasters. I mean, eighty two percent win rate. This is the two minute look. I mean, 77 Z, ZB, we, you know, Nash, uh, NG 90%, 86%, 6 J, great win rates, roller coasters there. RTY looks very weak considering NQ and ES going up. This thing just wants to keep pushing down. But my strategy was combining a couple of the indicators was to get it to risk free. That's where I am again right now, okay? I'm just a little bit, you know, are things going to sell off into the close is, is the question I'm asking myself now. What's those recent lows? Yeah, it's got to push through 14.29, I think, uh, for me to stay in this. Um, it's, it's trying. It's very, you know, but guys, in the circle guys that are in this webinar, we are back in profit because of that higher short position that we took. So, you know, it's not a bad time to get out of this if, if you want to be uh, secure and free to finish your day. Just doesn't want to push down at the moment, does it? We're getting bit signals uh, on the five minute. The, there's no trend today. It is a crappy, crappy trend. We're getting bit signals because we're getting spikes in volume, uh, wanting us to push down. But then we've got NQ, ES and YM pushing against us uh, to send to, to try and drag us up, you see, because you've got you got some big stocks making some, you know, Home Depot made all time highs today. Uh, you got Visa that's up nearly $5 today. Apple's up nearly $5. You know, this, this short's just not working out on RTY. Most, a lot of that index is selling off and obviously they're buying tech. Okay. Um, and what else they're buying? They're buying um, defense sector type stocks as well. Uh, so there is some selling going off in, our, in, in, the, in this index on the stocks, which is gradually moving this down. But it's just not pushing down enough because 
NQ is so strong. The tech sector is so strong right now. So you, you've got to keep an eye on those. If you're trading indexes, you need to understand what's going off with these, um, uh, with, with the stocks that are in the indexes, the main movers, if you like. How to decide which bit signals to take? None at the moment, okay? Purely because when we go long, when we go long, when we go big, okay? This is grinding down, but these are the lows of the day. Look at the risk to reward on these bit signals. There isn't a great deal of risk to reward. Again, look at the other indexes, Trevor, that I just told you about. ES just made a new high of the day, okay? NQ is pushing those new highs of the day. Are we really going to take a short on RTY right now? Okay. I was short earlier because once it broke those that quadruple bottom, I was absolutely certain that thing was going to go. Okay. It didn't because it was dragged back up again by lots of money going into tech. Okay. So we are, so yeah, it depends on the risk to reward. Okay. And I look for fresh air. If there's not enough fresh air risk to reward to these lows, which there isn't, that's the one to one there. Look, because when we look on the bits, remember these first target zone, second target zone is one to one, and that's near the low of the day. For me, this late on in the day, that is not good enough, especially when the other indexes are pushing up. We have got a great point of control here with the volume profile in that uh, we keep pushing down from there. Uh, so there's probably little scalps if it comes to test there, but there's no, I don't think we're gonna get a runner today. I really don't think we're gonna get a runner today. If we're not trend, if we're not really trending and not I mean, all the indexes, if you're going to trade indexes, they all need to be pulling in the same direction. Yeah. Uh, that gives you more confidence to, to you know, to get in them uh, and to, to, to get a runner. You know, we got a good runner on 6E, yes. Um, on, uh, oh God, what was it? The short we had was on YM. Oh, it's a long day, a long time since yesterday. Or was it long? I can't remember. It must have been long. Was that yesterday? Matt, can you remember what it was? <laughs> I can't remember. I know it was one of the indexes and we wrote it pretty well. <laughs> I can't, you know, and we, we did HG as well yesterday. We had two main trades yesterday. Uh, I'm sure it was this long here. Uh, where was it? No, short there. There it was. Sorry, I'm just all over the place. So this was the short yesterday uh, on the roller coaster coming down. Uh, we got in just before the market, well, as the market opened and it went down. Did hit those that uh, support and resistance zone. Really, really great looking trade there. Uh, so you know it was a good trade as we were good we were trading HG and then rebounded as well extremely well. Okay. So RTY guys is still going down. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to give it five ticks. One, two, three, four, five. Got three contracts. So I'm now risk free. The strategy worked to reduce that average holding cost. And I'm just going to see if I can get a runner, make a little bit of money. Um, the main thing is now the strategy that I used that combined those indicator suites has worked to get me on the short a lot higher up to reduce 
uh, that average holding price so I can actually get to break even a lot quicker, okay? Now, is there something that I can use to help me manage this if we get a runner? I don't think we'll get a runner though, purely because uh, we just tested those lows again, you see. Um, how, you know, how's this gonna really rock it down unless the other indexes follow it? Well, what I've done is I've given it every chance in the world. I've now put those three contracts uh, I put five ticks profit on there. One, two, three, four, maybe five there. Um, I'm just going to see if it can run. Okay. Uh, I did all the hard work. I've been patient all day. Uh, now I just want to see if this will break those lows. Will the other indexes follow? Right now, we, you know, it does. You know, NQ doesn't want to follow right now. It really doesn't want to follow. Have I got a strategy that's going to help me? trail this maybe 1430 uh, that's where we are right now okay no i don't think there is right now because we are going to be testing those lows and most likely bounce off because the other three indexes are pushing up but sometimes rty leads the way remember some of those that have um Hi, yes, Rusty. Yeah. Those um, indexes can, when we do those correlations, those that have been on the live training with me, um, sometimes RTY can start to lead the way. So I've just given it a bit of a chance. Do you know what? If this runs down into the, open, into the close, brilliant. If it doesn't, I've lost no money. I've used those, uh, combined those indicator suites to help me out here. Uh, the main thing is here, this low, what's this low? 14.25.7, it needs to break that low. We're at 14.20, so yes, I'm gonna go down. Ooh. Okay, so what I've done, remember, I've, um, I went, below this support and resistance zone. Let's go to this chart here. Today, I went short when we broke the quadruple bottom, okay? So these are the overnight lows, boom, boom. We had the open, bounced off, but then when it came back through again, I said, I've got to go short, okay? Uh, I did go short, in profit for a while, came back up, didn't take the stop out, came back down again, but as, as, it, as it was coming back down, it was gathering momentum. So I used the bits indicator on the one minute to get in up here somewhere to reduce that um, average holding cost so I could get to break even a little quicker. Now what's happened is we've come to test these lows. It's failed for now, but you know what? I'm not gonna lose any money. Right now, I've got five ticks locked in. I'm happy the strategy worked. Remember, I said this at the beginning and I'll repeat it over and over again. Sometimes you have to play defensive. So it's not just looking for those winning trades. Sometimes if you're in a losing trade that's going against you, but then doesn't take the stop out and comes, comes back around again, getting that higher entry on a short can get you to your break even a lot closer. But you've got to use the indicator suites to give you confidence to do that because you're going to be adding contracts to that position and this is a prime example of on how it works uh, and it's you know I'm in profit right now I've been you know it's not been an easy trade uh, but I I stayed firm didn't jump out always let things run to the stop is one of my other mottos uh, and you know this thing's in a bit of profit right now um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen I've got no risk on okay i'm going to let it run i'm going to let it run into the close because if rty gets some strength to the downside it could drag the others down and in which case then i'll be happy i'll be laughing all the way to the bank okay so any more questions before i go guys because it's been an hour it's 7 30 p.m here and it's time for dinner
roller coaster would be the better one for you. Sashin, you just need to watch your uh, risk management, um, but you're going to get more trades um, to uh, to go with that roller coaster on those smaller time frames, like the one minute. For example, the one minute roller coaster here. For example, uh, we look at um, gold, 77% win rate. Okay, 82% win rate on um, on copper. Yeah, there's you know even on the micros here, 85% rate on the micro 6B. So definitely roller coaster. Uh, I would say is the better one for the small account sizes. Okay, guys, thank you very much. We didn't have a great deal of uh, examples, but a few. Okay, um, next week's another week. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, don't forget, I am trading live tomorrow on the trade on the first of our trials on the Trading View platform. So a live streaming from Trading View. Uh, so if I just show you that now. So if you go to, I'll put this in the chat. Smart, this is on the time zone you're in, Quan. Uh, so if you go to that and then you go to streams, upcoming, so in 19 hours time, so one hour before the US markets open, I'm going live on TradingView. I'm going to be using the TradingView indicators to trade futures live tomorrow, an hour before the markets open. Uh, so come along, come and trade with me. Uh, you just need to go and follow us on, uh, on TradingView. Go to streams, upcoming, and then you'll just click on that um, when it's time and you can come and trade with me. The link is in, I've just, oh, hang on a sec, all panelists and attendees, put it in there. Okay. So we'll see what happens. There might be no trades. It might be another crappy day like today. Don't know, but we're going to do it. We're going to have some fun and we're going to trade for a while. So, uh, Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and I'll see you all, some of you, tomorrow. If not, I'll see you the rest of you next week.